Rogers, I hope I'm pronouncing that name correctly, from Arizona State University, uh, will speak first. Um, she, she teaches master's level courses on co-designing the future, operations management, contemporary issues, ethics, corporate social responsibility and law. Uh, she works as a researcher with publications and presentations focusing on group integration competences, psychometrics uh, and behavioral motivators, and the social implications of technology. Uh, she also works in a, consultant, in a consulting capacity in various industries, and she's a peer reviewer in various associations, as well as a member of advisory boards and program and technical committees. And today she's going to talk about converging contexts leading to the age of allostatic load. Um, an allostatic load may be the result of societal contexts that are converging, and she proposes that resilience is essential for a robust society, and that converging contexts are likely to lead humans to the age of allostatic load. And let me briefly introduce the second speaker then, um, Agnieszka um, Rykvalska, I hope I didn't butcher that uh, very terribly, uh, is an assistant professor um, at the Robert uh, Zayunk Institute for Social Studies at the University of Warsaw. She spe uh, specializes in applications of complex systems theory to social sciences and neuroscience. In her approach, she uses complexity tools, uh, networks, computer simulations, and modeling of dynamical systems to understand the specifics of social and psychological phenomena. And today she will be talking about the way big tech actors take advantage of the psychological needs of their users to create a self-reinforcing cycle of data accumulation and how this process impacts the well-being of individuals. So let me now hand over the floor to um, Christina, Christine, sorry. Go ahead. Thank you so much, Rui. And thank you so much to uh, Dr. Ober. Wonderful, wonderful talk. Um, thank you for all of the attendees and Jeremy and his team as well. This segment we've entitled Converging Contexts and the Age of Allostatic Load. My name is Christine Paraxelis, but I do want to draw your attention to the bottom right segment of this slide because these are my collaborators, Roba Abbas, MG Michael. Katina Michael and Jeremy Pitt. My statement for this panel is that resilience is essential for a robust society, even for a robust individual human system. And yet society is increasingly operating within multiple converging contexts that are likely to lead to what we believe is the age of allostatic load. We've looked at a couple of contexts it is, we could look at so many other contexts, but I just want to start with two. The first contact would in, context would include predatory goods and services. And we ask, what happens when the world around us is teeming with goods and services that lead to, at a minimum, the dependency syndrome in humans, or worse, triggering the neurobiology of addiction? The second context is converging digitization. And we ask, what happens when there's a convert convergence of all these processes happening behind between technologies that lead to not only a concentration of power in the hands of few, but also a triggering of the neurobiology of stress within humans? So we wonder, that, is there this consequence? Are we entering the age of allostatic load, which we believe undoubtedly would lead to diminished humanity? This graphic that we've put together is half-baked, so it's not complete yet. This is a work in progress. But what we wanted to capture as we're having these discussions is on the left hand side you see the blue zone is external to the human but quickly flows from the left to the right quickly flows from the external right inside the inner sanctum of the human becoming what we love jeremy's term insider threats so what i'd like to do is walk us through this graph but i'd like to start at the end to go back to the beginning because I'd like to start at the red box, which is allostatic load or a load. What is allostatic load? The first definition that we might, might give is the wear and tear on the human due to the accumulation 
of chronic or repeated stress. Another definition, a physiological measure of the cumulative burden of stress on the body, which could be assessed by markers of physiological dysregulation. If you look at the graph in the center of this slide in the blue box, you see an adaptive response to stress for a human. So a human's walking through the world, they, they suffer a stress event, and their fight, flight, freeze response gets triggered. But you can see within an appropriate amount of time, the human goes into recovery. So that stress event would have triggered that sympathetic nervous system. And then that dance between the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system is enjoyed and the person goes into a recovery. This might be because of various buffers, um, physical buffers within their life, psychosocial buffers within their life, psychospiritual buffers within their life, psychological buffers in their life, but they are entering into recovery within an appropriate amount of time. If you look at the bottom left graph, this would be a maladaptive example of in a normal person walking through life, but suffering repeated hits of stress without an opportunity to recover. I would propose that many of our essential workers, our healthcare workers, our educators, our, even our grocery staff, as they went out into the pandemic, not knowing if this invisible enemy would harm them or that they would bring this harm home, just by going out day after day after day, having that stress response triggered, we may see increased allostatic load because that is an example of a prolonged response where the human is stuck within that stress response. If you look to the right, this would be a classic prolonged response. And honestly, I wonder if this is what might be sitting under many of our long haulers who have suffered with COVID. So allostatic load, why do we care? Because this is, if this were a continuum, and the left side is the red zone of allostatic load, it would be the opposite end of the continuum from the great stuff of resilience. Our ability to withstand and recover from those, those, that stuff of adversity in life. But allostatic load, going back to the left side, is highly detrimental. It compromises us cognitively, emotionally, relationally, we suffer worry, impaired judgment, fog brain, indecision. We have insomnia. We are way more prone to the dependency syndrome, and we are far more prone to addiction. Most people slip into STIRBS almost immediately, or those stress-relieving behaviors, the excessive drinking, the undereating, the overeating, and things as such. This is the stuff that sets us up for anxiety and depression. And very unfortunately, we see humans with much aggression and the very buffers that they need, like the psychosocial buffers, they begin to withdraw from. They isolate, they pull away, lack of intimacy and distrust and these type of, type of things. Herbert Benson describes it as we fall into bottom up thinking instead of top-down thinking. And we can see this right in MRIs. We see that the, the thinking is coming through that, that kind of animal section of the brain rather than that resilience, that, that um, almost response flexibility that comes with executive order thinking through the prefrontal. I would also propose that allostatic load smacks of social justice. It, it's a social justice issue. Why? Because lower socioeconomic status is correlated to increased levels of allostatic load. Socio demos that are obviously correlated to the SES, the lower SES, are also, um, we're seeing increased levels of allostatic load in humans. Discrimination, inequity, marginalization, these are also um, correlated with higher levels, levels of allostatic load. Chandra et al have done just wonderful work looking at how we can now start to look at a load at the community level and we see that community a load obviously negatively impacts allostatic load so it's increased in humans and then the individuals thereby and it becomes this terrible cycle from individual to community back 
So taking a look at this particular graph, which again is half baked, so go with me here. But when we look on the left hand side, I just want to mention that um, I'm going to walk through quickly each of the steps, but look at where we land. We land in really, I heard so many wonderful panelists talk about poverty and enslavement. Maybe sitting underneath this diminished human, humanity is physiological poverty, physiological enslavement. So the first segment of a societal context that you saw in the graph, the predatory goods and services, food, gaming, gambling, pharmaceutical, uh, social media, many forms of entertainment. We're even seeing this with TV, we're seeing this with advertising, with marketing, etc. These companies at best are often negligent in their design, their development, and their deployment of their goods and services. They're negligent to consider the dependency syndrome created and or, or addiction that could be created. But worse, there is often nefarious intent where they are actually designing, delivering, and deploying to create addiction in us. One just quick example, um, culinary institutes teach the, the triad, the beautiful three, crunchy, salty, sweet, and suddenly it triggers in our brain, we increase consumption, which increases purchasing, which is great for them, but bad for humanity. Then the converging digitization, digitization, excuse me. When we, we've looked at this before with the valences being watched from the sky, from the street, by each other, um, being listened to in, in the inner sanctum, and these are converging in and of themselves. We could just take one segment of the valences and explode it and look at the multiple technologies that are converging. When we look just at the valences, we mined out six to seven risks for humans. I just want to highlight three because of the downstream effect leading to diminished humanity. Insightfulness. So when humans and research shows as we are constantly watched that technology is more ubiquitous and aware and uh, context aware of what we're doing, et cetera. Um, we're now seeing with facial emotional, emotion recognition that the human is able to identify the emotion in, the, in another human. So, so computer to human is better than human to human. Uh, that's uncomfortable for us. Uh, next is the imperceptibility of all these processes that are happening, happening behind lines of visibility. We don't even know where our data are, where they go, um, who has it, for how long. And then the incomprehensibility of all these processes, even when they're in front of the line of visibility, we sometimes can't even understand um, even just terms and conditions that we would opt into. So if you, you see these societal contexts, and again, there are so many more we can explore, but the converging digitization definitely leads to a concentration of power in the hands of a few. There the huge empower imbalances we're seeing birthed there. And then that thereby allows more convergence, which adds to, and you can see that cycle that we added. This begins to smack of the surveillance capitalism and the techno feudalism and the neo and the new feudalism and those type of um, real big ideas that really are um, essential to explore for us as humans. So now we see these societal contexts moving downstream. And if the neurobiology of addiction gets triggered and the neurobiology of stress gets triggered, now addiction can lead to more stress and stress leads us open to more addiction, which leads us open. And you can feel that cycle happening. This undoubtedly is the stuff of physiological disruption. So whether it's contraction of muscles, increased cortisol levels, toxin production, we hear pain louder. Um, central sensitization can happen where uh, we're now perceiving threats where there are not threats. And that at a minimum uh, begins to smack of the stuff of vigilance fatigue. And now we as humans, we're suffering. Uh, there's a failure to even accurately identify or analyze uh, bona fide threats uh, and that the physiological disruption alone could lead to A-load, but, but the vigilance fatigue is very, very likely uh, to map us back to A-load. 
leading to diminished humanity. And lastly, if we are even in a low grade state of allostatic load, now we're feeding back in compounding risk back into we're more vulnerable, we're more vulnerable to predatory goods and services, we're less likely to be able to identify and fight the concentration of power leading to power imbalances, which I believe will lead to not just diminished humanity, but maybe even physiological enslavement. I'll phrase there, thank you so much for your time.